How do I hear God's voice? Why isn't God talking to me? If these questions resonate with you, then you want to stick around. In this video, I'm going to talk about the 10 ways that God speaks to us and then how to hear his voice in each of those ways. So the first question I get when I come to spiritual direction is, you know, how do I hear from God? I don't really know what he's saying. And oftentimes I feel like it's because there are these expectations of how God is going to speak. So I'm going to encourage you to stop the video and to think of the expectations that you have. How do you expect God to speak to you? I'll give you some time. Just drop down a few of them. Okay, awesome. So you have those ideas in your head. What are the ways you expect to hear from God? Oftentimes when we expect those ways, we can be fixated on them and we don't notice the other nine or eight other ways that God might be speaking to us. I've heard from God in this way before, so that's the way God's going to speak to me. That's how he always has and that's how he always will. Fortunately for us, change the way he talks to us to get our attention and his ways are above our ways and his thoughts are above our thoughts. I do not always know why he chooses to speak to us in different ways, but knowing the different ways just God does speak can really help remove the veil and the mystery behind God speaking to us. Smash the like button so that this video gets shared with other people in the algorithms. So let's get started. The number one way that God can speak to us through is his word. And this one maybe seem very obvious to you and it's the first one and then the most important one because all the other nine ways that we're going to hear from God we're going to filter through this one hearing God from the Bible is going to be one of the most one of the primary ways we hear from God and then we're going to filter everything else out through so if what God is saying in your current life really contradicts with the message of the Bible with the patterns of the Bible with the theology of the Bible and with certain things in scripture, then I would say, well, that's probably not God speaking to you. That's probably something from yourself or the enemy or the world talking to you. So maybe, no, we, we use the Bible as the um, buck, if you will, right? The Holy Spirit in the Bible or the buck, right? That's where the buck stops. So God, we're reading scripture. It can be a way of hearing God's. God's words are um, in scripture and also how he's spoken to people throughout history, throughout the biblical times, gives us a huge insight to how God speaks to us. That's why we can kind of go off the nine other ways because we see that in scripture. Um, so the Bible is one of the primary ways to hear from God. I encourage you, if you want to hear God's voice or know what God is doing, start reading scripture and um, verses or having scripture read over you, whether that's being read audibly to you or listening to it through an app, um, pulling out your Bible, going to a liturgical service where they're reading the Bible, that scripture um, can speak to us. Especially the practice like Lectio Divina is really helpful where you read scripture meditatively, where you're kind of more opening to, okay, God, what are you saying through this passage to me? When we start actually looking for God's voice in scripture, as opposed to just, you know, maybe absorbing knowledge just for the sake of knowledge or trying to please God, but to actually have scripture nourish us, to open our hearts up and to be, um, to be open to whatever God might be saying to us. The second way that God can speak to us is through our thoughts. So this one can um, be where we get a thought that can be really applicable to maybe our situation or something we prayed about. A thought can maybe come out of nowhere that is God speaking to us. Um, this one can be tricky because we have a lot of thoughts personally ourselves and we can also get really confused, especially if we get like a condemning thought. We'd be like, well, God may be condemning me, especially if I'm praying about something that I'm, I, I'm feeling and I'm, I'm pouring out my heart or confessing and then I feel condemnation. I thought that, oh, you're bad. Well, oftentimes those are our voices or internalized parent voices that are not God. And so we'll think God is speaking to us through our thoughts and we'll shut that down. So we need to be able to keep those things in discernment. Well, do we see God condemning us in scripture? No, we don't see Jesus condemning us. So again, scripture is going to be where we're filtering through these thoughts. If you're feeling a sense of God's telling you he loves you and you get a thought of, I love you, you're my child. Well, that can't be from God. It's like, well, we see that in scripture though. You know, we are, um, no one's righteous but one and Christ died for us. And so we are his righteousness and he does love us. So that actually is in line with scripture. So those thoughts could be really from God, um, not just your self-talk. God can definitely speak through our thoughts. We get this thought in our head and it can clearly come from God. And that just takes discernment. You need to be able to know yourself. Um, scripture says in John, um, Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. How do we know his voice? We know it by experience, number one. And then um, we also know by 
by looking through scripture and seeing how God speaks to um, all of his people. And also I would add a plug in for the saints. So I, we definitely look at the Bible for how he's spoken to people, but also look through our mothers and fathers, the history of the church, how Augustine heard, how St. Aquinas, Saint Mother Teresa, how did she hear from God? Like we can look through them too and hear their um, stories and example and to get knowledge and insight into how God may be speaking. The third one, this can be quite, quite controversial, that is um, listening to God through our feelings. We can say, well, you know, in Jeremiah, it says the heart is deceitful above all things. And say, Meryl, you always say our feelings are not the barometer of God's presence. Absolutely. I would agree with that. So it's not the barometer, but it can still be an indicator. Now, let me explain. So our feelings are the primary, are the kind of the core, right? Kids tend to feel, kids do feel before they kind of develop the front part of their brain. I'm going to geek out on you for a little bit. So the feelings are really important. They are kind of our primal, our, are the deepest part of our hearts where that's where God works. God works in the deep heart of our hearts to reveal himself to us. We need to listen to our feelings. As, you know, prime example of this, I'll just use these two feelings as an example of making a decision, right? Making a decision based on you feel peace about it or do you feel anxious about it? Now, the anxiety could be coming from past experiences. It could become from, you know, some old result, under result fears. It could become from your insecurities. They need to be, um, again, work through. It could be something middle or mental health related, but oftentimes you say, you know, hey, I don't, really don't feel peace about this. God could really be working in your feelings. And I know you resonate with this, or at least you've heard of somebody talking about this because it's a pretty popular one to have our feelings kind of um, be a sense of what God is saying to us. The fourth way is going to be similar to the feelings, but it's going to be a little bit deeper, and that is going to be our gut. So our gut sense from God can be another way he speaks to us. Think about when you're convicted of something. You're like deep down in your heart or your gut, you're like, yes, I know this is what God is saying, or this is a hard no for me. Um, and I'm using decision making because that's, I feel like the most when we tend to look for God's voice, which I don't think is the best way to look for God, but that's where we, that's where we, we start with that. Cause that's something where most people tend to need God for decisions. Um, they need God all the time, but decisions is a pretty popular one. So in their gut, you know, is where you're going to hear from God. You're the sense of like, mm, this isn't true or this is true. Um, so that again takes discernment because again, our gut can be misled. We can have history and mental health stuff, or we can be really unsure. And that's why we think we need the Bible to help um, filter everything. Community, it's to bounce it off people and have people affirm and work through it and can, because they can reflect blind spots. A mentor, a spiritual director, somebody who's maybe really more trained and can really, um, who's really gone before you in their spiritual journey to help you articulate and to help you um, just kind of see in the patterns of God in your own life. And then the fourth would be just your circumstances. Does this make sense? Whatever God is calling you into and you're kind of hearing from God from your gut. The fifth way you can hear from God is through dreams. We see this in scripture very clearly. We see this very clearly. The two Josephs I think about right away, which is Joseph and the multicolored coat, where he got the, um, the dream about um, his brothers. And then he was also interpreting Pharaoh's dreams about the famine that was coming into the land. And God really spoke to, broke through Joseph to help. Then we have Joseph, an angel appears to him in a dream to tell him kind of what to do with um, Mary and Jesus who's about to be born. So God definitely speaks to us through our dreams. Number six is going to be through our senses. So that is going to be how what we see, what we hear, what we taste, what we touch, what we smell. The thing about maybe hearing music, hearing music being played that really speaks to your soul or maybe seeing um, a beautiful painting or maybe you smell a sense of roses or home cooked meal. You can really hear God saying through that. So our senses is another way that God can hear. God can speak to us is through our senses and through our environment. Um, the seventh one, which is a pretty popular one, is to hear the voice of God through other people, whether that's a timely word or someone praying over you or a mentor or a spiritual director giving you insight or a, a word um, of encouragement or speaking something prophetic to you. Um, say, oh, I know I got this sense or I got this um, vision for you that I want to share with you. So they're hearing from God maybe with a vision, a song or something. Maybe they hear, you know, I hear this hymn. On Christ the Solid Rock I stand and you're like, wow, okay, that really speaks to me. God is encouraging me to stand firm on him. So those are ways to hear from God as well. You can also hear from God through a sermon, through your pastor speaking, through something on the radio. So other people in this way of hearing from God are going to be the um, kind of the vessel in which God is speaking to you. The eighth way is going to be nature. This is a pretty popular one too. People tend to say, I need to get away, go to the mountains or go to the beach and journal or 
um, take a walk in my garden. These are amazing ways to hear from God because you're in just for God, God's creation and you're seeing his handiwork everywhere. And so it's so much easier to see God when you are not distracted. You don't have your phone with you when you're not plugged in and being yeah, distracted and being bombarded with messages constantly. They're asking and vying for your attention. You get to be free a little bit more. Of, you get to be a lot more available to what God is doing and what he's saying. So I know a friend who says whenever she sees a rose, she always sees a sense that God made those for her and she feels so much intimacy with God when she sees roses. Um, I tend to see, whenever I see the clouds, I tend to look up and I ask God, you know, God, why did you make that cloud that way? Look at that funny shape. It actually is a way that I can actually dialogue with God about who he is and what he's doing is by clouds. Um, I know people that go on walks, they really want to feel connected to God. So being in nature can be a huge way to hearing from God when you're using your senses, you're using your sight, your smell, um, your I guess taste, you know, having maybe an, an amazing meal. It's not really nature. Maybe you're eating a blueberry out of nature and that is another way to hear from God. The ninth way to hear from God, this is actually where I primarily hear from God, um, is through your imagination. Um, that could be maybe reading a passage of scripture with your imagination and kind of imagining yourself being there, thinking you're one of the disciples and seeing how Jesus might react to you or may to might talk to you. You can also in your imagination hear from God by asking God a question and waiting for him to respond and imagining how God looks at you, what he um, might be saying, what, my, what he might be doing, where is God physically in proximity to you in your imagination. That can be huge indicators of how you're perceiving God right now in your life and also if God is speaking to you and in ways that he, he is. Um, images are a huge way that I tend to get for other people and even for me when I really, I really resonate with images partly because they can really say so much more than words can. The famous saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. They can give us meaning and they can represent so much more than just a baby, even, even a long page of words can articulate seeing an image. So God can speak to us through imagery as well. And that could include, you know, something visual we're seeing like a painting or um, an icon or watching um, a child and mother play in a park. There could be tons of ways that you can um, see God through your imagination and through images um, that can resonate with you. And then you'll probably get a thought or a sense or a feeling or maybe a gut sense from God. There's often um, multiple ways God's speaking. Maybe imagination or images are one of the like vehicle, the primary vehicle in which God is speaking. And then the 10th way that God speaks to us is through circumstances. This one's tricky because we can often inter interpret circumstances, especially ones that are negative, as God's punishment. And so I would be careful to think about all of our circumstances as God, as attaching a lot of meaning to that until you start to really notice what God is saying in the other nine ways. But our circumstances could be maybe we get broken up with, maybe we lose our job, or maybe we get a promotion, or maybe um, we find out we're pregnant, like all of a sudden our calling changes, our energy has to change, our um, our emotions are changing. And so God can sometimes be speaking to us in our circumstances. The flat tire we get could be an invitation for us to slow down. Um, the line of the bank could be teaching us about our patients. Um, it doesn't have to always be about character development, but it could be other things like the church. There could be something that's happening at church where God may be asking you a circumstance comes up to you where you have God's actually inviting you to maybe be bold and stand up and to speak and um, be the mouthpiece for him in those circumstances. So in circumstances, we can definitely hear from God and we can start to see God working. But we can often attach meaning to circumstances thinking, oh, if God does this, this happened, then that means. But all of these ways of hearing from God need to be brought into discernment. And I'm going to have another video um, about discernment in the next coming, coming weeks on how to discern how, when we hear God's voice. But I hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to share it with somebody if you think um, they might benefit from that. Let me know in the comments below which of the um, 10 ways to hear from God do you resonate with the most? And then maybe which of these 10 ways do you want to hear from God more? Like what are some of the ways you would like to hear from God of the 10? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and smash the like button because it helps get this video to more people. So, all right, I will see you next time.